It's Saturday the 6th of June and I've been away unexpectedly for the last two and a bit weeks. So today I want to take you on a whirlwind in the wind to around this garden and show you what craziness has been happening while I've been away. Hello everyone and welcome back to Growing Frugal and if you've not been here before, here on this channel I post videos about growing food, about cooking creatively with that food and learning how to store it and save it and also get a bit frugal along the way. So if you like the sound of that do subscribe. It's a very windy day here in the garden and today I'm just taking you around on a tour to give you a quick look at what's been happening and it's been a very difficult time for us as a family and probably for many of you out there so I, I do hope you're well and I've filmed a couple of times some garden updates but I've had to go away due to bereavement and I've just not got round to editing or posting so I'm sorry about that but I know you'll understand how difficult it is for many of us at the moment and of course here in the UK now it's coming up um, middle of June we're right in the middle of the growing season and Mr Growing Frugal has been watering and trying to look after my garden while I've been away and I have to say that gardening is not his thing but he's been an absolute star and loads of my plants have survived and many of them are thriving. So thank you Mr Growing Frugal if you're watching this and if you're not why not and now let's take you round and give you a quick tour on this windy day so you can see where things are up to. So let's start by having a look at this, the first bush tomato that I planted out just outside the door and in the last video I was showing you how I was protecting that tomato and as you can see it's all paid off because it is very healthy here and looking good, lots of flowers coming so we're going to have lots of tomatoes on this one soon. So let's go through to the tomato greenhouses. So these tomatoes have been growing like crazy while I've been away and they're looking good but one thing I didn't teach Mr Growing Frugal to do was how to pinch out those little growing stems that come, the side shoots that need taking off. So these tomatoes in the grow houses have been really focusing on building enormous extra branches while I've been away and I've got quite a job to do now to prune all of these tomatoes. But we've got some flowers here on the tomatoes so hopefully we'll have more to show when I do my next tomatoes video. Okay, so here is the small one metre by one metre raised bed and I have, just like last year, a squash growing in here and it's doing pretty well so far. You can see that we're starting to get a little squash. So behind the main bed in a large container I have got an Ushikakuri squash. And as you can see, this is already growing up the fence. Hopefully you can see that little tiny squash forming. And if you've watched my Grow Tomatoes for Beginners series, these are the little outdoor tomatoes and just look at them. So we've got two different kinds of outdoor tomatoes here. And again, I'll tell you a bit more about this when I do my next chapter in the Grow Tomato series. But they're covered in flowers and already have fruit. So we've got these lovely tomatoes already forming, already quite big. These are an early variety. And I can't wait for those to get going. And this isn't vegetables, but look at the pond area. This is the little bathtub pond, a bath sunk into the garden. That I kind of renovated when we got here, it was just stagnant water and we've got frogs and lizards and snails and all kinds of things in here. And the water lilies are here, marsh marigolds absolutely thriving and loads of shelter for the little froglets that will be appearing. So now let's go down to the raised beds. So firstly we'll go to this bed at the end here and I've built a trellis 
to grow up my squash. So here we've got the white serpent squash, which I planted, I think about a week before I went away, maybe a couple of weeks. So maybe about a month ago now, it's looking very well. I've got the EnviroMesh netting up just to help with the wind, because um, it tends to blow this way. So it's just on a couple of the sides. Already got its flowers coming. And just if you look down here, there's our first serpent squash. So this is kind of like a courgette, but it's not quite as wet inside, which makes it much nicer for cooking. It's a heritage seed, and I really recommend it if you can get hold of it, and if you like courgette type summer squash. Mm. And here, just further along from that, is I think it's a crown prince. Um, I literally threw this plant in in the hope that it would survive when I was called away, and um, it's doing all right. And I think it will be okay. Oh, the garlic. Here's the garlic in the same bed as the squash. And this is going to come out. So as you can see, it's absolutely ravaged by rust. And I'll, in another video, I'll take this out and show you what I find when I take it out. So I'm not optimistic, but hey, there might be something that's usable. So we don't completely give up on anything until we know for sure. But oh, what a devastating rust attack that is. And now moving around to the next bed. This is the kind of bed that might get you thrown off some allotment, but because it's a kitchen garden, I can do what I like. And what you're seeing here is my shallots. So these are banana shallots, germal, and doing really well. I uh, pulled one out already earlier on and um, looking fantastic. So we'll give these a bit longer, let them get a little bit bigger. Oh, and then here next to the shallots is a row of my red beard onions. So kind of like a spring onion, a green onion. And first time I've grown these, they're not far off being big enough to pull. So I'm looking forward to trying those. And then far too close to them <laughs> are my carrots. And the carrots are looking good. So they've now gone beyond that stage where they feel so delicate when you water them. They feel like they're going to just be crushed by the water itself. And if we now look down, they're not quite peeping up yet. So when they're peeping up, they'll be ready to pull. I need to do a bit of weeding here, but the carrots are looking good. And then the rocket's kind of taken off a little bit too much. So I need to give these a good cut and then they'll come back again. And then right on the end here, and again, I just threw these in last minute before I went. I've got some uh, Lisbon spring onions. I think they're white Lisbon. So it's a bit of a crazy mess of a bed. <laughs> um, the harvest probably won't be quite as big as they might be for everything because everything is so crammed together. And then there's this open space waiting to be planted in and I have plans for that but I just want to review my plans before I put anything in and then here's the final bed look at that side it's really gone bananas here those canes are across because to keep the cats off that spare bit of soil uh, or unpleasant things happen overnight so here we have those three lettuce that I planted a little while ago. Now I normally pick the lettuce much more frequently than Mr. Growing Frugal has. I've not actually seen them as big as this. Mm, amazing. But hopefully, hopefully I'll be in time and this hasn't gone to seed. It's not far off. Um, so we've got three lettuce here, all gorgeous coarse lettuce, red Grenoble amazing and then while i was away mr grown frugal's first foray into actual planting he planted some dwarf french beans for me and he's done an excellent job because here they are and they haven't been eaten by slugs and they are getting to the point where they won't be so we've got two rows of french beans there and then look at the peas so here we've actually got peas ready to pick now and so i need to get picking those and on the other side are the sugar snaps you can barely see them so there's the sugar snaps also in flower not quite fruited yet or they're just starting actually um, so they're gonna be up and away soon oh look at the wind you can see how why I lose a lot of plants how are these plants surviving so here's my broad beans 
and there they are they're getting their first pods here so we'll be eating from these very very soon so here are the lettuce that are sitting underneath the broad beans nicely in the shade also super happy and I just put those in because lots of the broad beans didn't germinate these were really old seeds um, more of them did than I expected so we've used that bit of space and put some lettuce in there and actually lettuce loves a bit of shade at this time of year so it's looking great and again really ready for a pick and then something that's really lifted my spirits our little apple tree has fruit on it for the first time so this is an espaliered apple tree and it's got so many apples on it. Look at those. Oh, this is a sunset espalier which is a very hardy apple tree and quite reliable. And I chose that because people have said I'll never be able to grow an apple here. But at least I've been able to grow mini apples and we'll know in the autumn whether any of them make it all the way through. But doesn't it look gorgeous? So it's getting very windy outside. So that's your garden tour for today. I'm going to do a, some more videos in the next few days, sorting out the crop, sorting out the mess, getting rid of what's gone, replanting some other stuff ready to go. So join me soon for the next video here on Grown Frugal.